Time. Time is too slow for those who wait. It's too swift for those who fear. It's too long for those who grieve, but too short for those who rejoice. But for those who love, time is eternity. Captain, my captain. The story I'm gonna tell you today sounds unreal, but I promise it was. It happened in 18th century and it is 100% real. Probably, like me, now you're spending lots of time at home, sitting down on the sofa, watching TV, and the only thing you watch is bad news. Come on, TV, give me some of that sweet, sweet pep. And maybe you're losing your faith in humanity. <laughs> Wait a second, don't delay your WhatsApp yet. The story I'm gonna tell you is the perfect example of the things we can achieve if we work together as humanity, if we are able to link together intelligence and passion. Today the story I'm going to tell you is about Palmy's operation and about the idea about vaccinate the whole world. Today in Entre Tertios and Bifitar. Welcome. Now I am in the explanation mood. Something, something, money, come on, give me lots of money. Okay, so our story, as any story, has an introduction. We have to imagine the situation. But it's a bit difficult because we are in 21st century, so we have to move back to 18th century. That's why I have a space time traveling rocket, okay? We switch this on. And automatically now we are in 18th century. So now in 18th century we are facing another illness, another pandemic. But in this case it's much much more dangerous than the one that we are facing in 21st century. It's called smallpox, all right? And it's killing hundreds of millions of people all around the world, especially the kids. This illness gets really spread all around Europe because of the growing of the cities and the growing of the population thanks to the first and the second industrial revolution. So now we know the problems we face, okay? This is the smallpox virus. It infected the pharaohs, caused a terrible impact on the Greek and Roman empires and decimated Native American populations. Nothing seemed to stop this lethal plague until the end of the 18th century. At that time, smallpox was a major global endemic disease. Only in Europe, it killed around 400,000 people per year. It wasn't until 1796 when the British biologist Edward Jenner, Edward Jenner, 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 he noticed that the milkmaids, they have some blisters on their hands, quite similar to smallpox blisters. However, these people, they look very healthy. They don't look like almost dying at all like people with a smallpox they did. So what was, what was the problem? What, they were superhuman or what, what was their special features? Ah, here are lies of the features. There is a connection between smallpox, human one, and cowpox. That is a similar illness, but much, much weaker. And he noticed that people who passed cowpox, they didn't pass or they wouldn't pass smallpox in the future at all. So he thought, okay, how can I get the, this immunization? This was the idea. He got the pus inside a blister from a cowpox and he put into a person. In this case, eight years old child. Yeah, I know, testing child is not like really uh, ethical. <laughs> Won't somebody please think of the children? So he took the pus of the blister of cowpox and put inside a kid eight years old. After a few days, the kid uh, started growing a few blisters. He has some fever, but anything similar that he would have if he had the smallpox. So much weaker symptoms. After he passed the cowpox, they test on him the smallpox, the real dangerous illness. And you know what? No symptoms at all, nothing, not a smallpox anymore. So that child, what was the name of that child? James Phillips, James Phillips. James Phillips, 
he got immunized. His immune system got memory. I know this topic is quite interesting. Let me explain really quick, okay? Because probably you didn't listen to your science teacher, this is it, in science. That page has been ripped out, sir. Well, if I were somebody else's book. They're all ripped out, sir. Anyway, so anything that produces an illness is called pathogen, all right? It can be a virus, it can be a bacteria, it can be a fungi. Anything that can, produ can produce an illness is a pathogen, all right? However, the vaccine doesn't need to have the pathogen or the full pathogen. It's all, it, only need to it only needs to have an antigen. It could be a portion of the pathogen or the weaker version of the pathogen. Anyway, what we want to produce in our body is the production of antibodies. What are antibodies? It's like kind of a memory that our body has. So once the antibodies against that particular antigen are produced, next time when we face the real illness, our body is fully equipped and fully prepared against that antigen. And this is what happened. If you got the immunization, if once you pass the cowpox, you are already immunized for the smallpox. And this is the story. This is how Edward Jenner is considered the first immunology, immunologist, or he established the first vaccine. So this is the end of the story. No. Problems. What, what do you mean with no? No. No. Well, that, that, that is true. Thank you, conscience. Thank you. No, the story is not over at all, okay? With this, the story is not over. Because the problem was that Edward Jenner's discover wasn't accepted by scientific community at all. They completely ignore him at the best, and others, they completely refuse even to listen to his ideas. He never expect that his discover would be listened in the other side of Europe. In this case, by another scientist, but Spanish one. He was the royal doctor, Francisco de Balmis. And he came to the king and he said, look, my king, I got this, I got an idea. I think I'm able to vaccine the whole world. What? Yeah, vaccine the whole world. Or at least the children in the Spanish empire. I like the way you think. I like the way Snrub thinks. I like too. So this is how they start the first vaccination expedition ever. This expedition started in <laughs> in Spain and traveled all around the world vaccinating all the children in the Spanish Empire. First they start in Spain, then they went to Puerto Rico, Cuba, South America, after that Mexico, then to Manila in Philippines, then they went even to China and after that they came back to Spain. And this is how Edward Jenner discover was spread all around the world. But not just the vaccine, that is really, really important, but also the amount of hospitals that they were established in each single corner of the world is spreading around the knowledge about vaccinations. Once the, the knowledge was spread, people in England started believing Edward Jenner, and finally they accepted him in the Royal Medical Society, but only after another scientist, in this case Spanish, spread all his knowledge all around the globe. This story is an example of the great things we can achieve when we work together as a society, when our goal is saving lives, when our goal, when our actions are moved by love. Bring you love. It's bringing love, don't let it get away. Break its legs. You see, working together, Gene, science, people, everyone working together in order to overcome dark moments, like the moments we are facing today. Don't lose faith in society. Don't lose your faith in science and on yourself. Take care and please wash your hands. Before leaving, please subscribe, little bell, like, that help us a lot. Don't forget also we have Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. We would be really happy if you follow us. And also, if you have any question, any topic you would like to propose, just comment it. We answer everything. So, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. For leaving, please don't forget to subscribe. Also, 